Hello everyone, welcome to Practical GCP. So today I would like to talk about a way to split mixed data using a data flow pipeline. So this is around uh, when you have data with mixed schemas and uh, the end result of this session is I'm going to show you not only how to split it, but also how to ingest the data into BigQuery as part of this process. So let's have a look at the problem first. So the problem at hand we have is, it's actually quite a common problem that you have typically these message queues with mixed message types, right? So that, let's say um, like a Kafka cluster with one topic, uh, it has a mixture of many type of events, which typically have different schemas. So if you look at this scenario, um, you typically have this sits on the on-prem environment or in an area that you typically don't want to spend a lot of time, you know, putting lots of processing in there because you don't have the, you know, the cloud in there to actually help you with the amount of tooling you can use uh, in that sense. And also it's kind of more secure with a network that's probably much easier to kind of process the data after you put it into, for example, in this case is the cloud storage. Uh, but the problem is you still end up with a mixture of many type of messages. So in this kind of diagram, um, I've kind of put it down into, you got three schemas in this case, um, and you got a mixed mixed schema. So something like this, right? So I only put one column in here, but you get the idea. You got one schema with column called field one, the other with field two, and then the other with field three, right? So those are the three different kind of messages. They're not compatible with each other. So it's important to split them, right? And in order to solve this, um, there, the reason I actually done this video is there's not really something out of the box from uh, especially the data flow templates that Google have provided. Um, so in this case, you kind of need to do a bit of custom processing. So you can't use one of the existing ones that Google has given to, to you. Uh, but what you can do is to create your own data flow template uh, in order to to pass the, the file that in JSON line uh, sits in cloud storage. If you don't know what JSON line is, uh, you can look it up on Google. It's quite straightforward. It basically means uh, end of line delimited JSON. So you have like a one JSON document that is uh, a single line, right? And then it doesn't have any line returns or anything. But at the end of that JSON document, you have a line return, then you have the next line, the next line. So those are typically uh, formats, file formats uh, similar to Avro. Um, that is typically used for distributed processing. So if you have something like Cloud Dataflow, you can, if you have hundreds of, or even thousands of those JSON line files with you know, various kind of size, then you can use Dataflow to process these kind of file formats uh, in, 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 with many compute uh, resources at the same time in parallel, right? So that is because of the every single line uh, in the JSON, right? It, that in the JSON line file, can be split into multiple workers, aka machines, and then it will do the processing all in parallel. So you get the you get something uh, you get a scalability out of it. So the solution here is simply about creating a data flow pipeline, and then and they'll do two things, right? So first thing is you kind of have to ignore the things you don't know, right? So if there's things that you don't really care about and things you don't know about, you don't want it to kind of come in and break your pipeline. So you want to do a filter to get rid of these. And um, the second part is is something you can use called the partition. So you can partition uh, your data based on kind of some pattern matching. So later on, I can show you in the code and how what kind of pattern ma pattern matching I've done in this particular case. But you, you can typically do whatever you like, right? If you have a message type, you can use the message type to do the pattern matching to filter out those messages you like and partition by those. Um, and then in, in this particular case, I've actually used a, a a very special example because in some of the scenarios, you don't actually have a message type, right? The message is just like a raw event, but it doesn't actually have it's sufficient information to tell you like one, one field, this is what the message means. So instead, it just has the message payload. So in those particular cases, I've actually used a pattern matching based on a unique field name to define that message. So it, as soon as it finds that column, 
it will know, okay, this message belongs to that type, but it has to be unique. So if you have three type of messages and then each message must not have an overlapping column if that's the unique one you're using. And then at the end of the partitioning, you basically create a pipe for each one of those to go to a separate BigQuery table. And then, you know, when you have the, the mixture of these JSON line files with different kind of messages, different schemas, then you kind of allocate to them to the correct ones when you're done. So just one last thing. So before I sh start showing you the, the actual thing I've done is I've used something called a flex data flow template. So this is something I think got introduced last year and it's, a, it's the newest way to package data flow jobs that right to run those. Um, the, the key difference here is you, you actually use a Docker file to package the data flow template and you uh, you build it and deploy to artifact registry uh, and then you register the location of you know the the data flow flex template in artifact registry using a json representation uh in the in the cloud storage bucket right so that's kind of where the the template is stored and finally you can trigger the template using uh just the gcloud command to run it uh, so I wouldn't go too much detail into this particular one because there's a lot to talk about just on the flex template itself. Uh, but one of the key things you can see this as a, you are actually using Docker, so it gives you a lot more flexibility um, in terms of building it. it. One of the key things is you can build a data flow execution graph like at, at runtime, so later on, not kind of in the template itself, which is the classic template used to do. Um, yeah, so let's crack on. So first of all, I want to describe the problem. Um, in the sense of the data I've used and then uh, kind of to, to replicate this problem, right? So I've looked at the public data set and what I've done is I've picked three tables that has very different schemas, which is the Austin 311 service request, the baseball schedules, right? And also the uh, the bike share station, so, right? So these are the three uh, table I've picked. So what I've done is I've exported all of the data from those three tables into the uh, the files, right, with exactly the same prefix, which means, you know, when you're reading this kind of stuff using a data flow job, you can't really tell, you know, I just read zero or one or two. It typically is a file pattern uh, mimicking. You have a mixture of many different JSON line files that you read, right? So you don't actually know which one is which, but you know there are three uh, schemas mixed up in this problem. Um, so let's have a look at the how the how the job is is constructed. So this is the repository which I've already shared, and that gives you all of the details that you require to uh, to run the template, to run the uh, the data flow job locally, you know, to test it out, and then to also you know package the whole thing to run on uh, as a flex template. So if, let's have a look at this main.py. So this is the main thing that we use. Uh, in terms of kind of, you know, doing the filtering, doing the partitioning, uh, and then, you know, split it into three BigQuery tables. <clears throat> so this, the few things I want to talk about in here, the one thing I put in is this kind of schema identifiers. So obviously I'm creating a template here, which, which means I can specify whatever I like. If I have three different schemas, five different schemas, you know, with different names, then I, I want to create some kind of template that I can pass this at runtime, right? So what I've done here is, so this is what I mentioned earlier about matching column name, right? So the the pattern here I've created is a unique field name. So this is something that in the uh, that schema, it has to be unique. So it doesn't exist in any other schemas that you're processing, right? So you can identify the message schema based on a unique field name uh, in that payload. And then also is kind of the partition key, right? So the partition key here is um, is basically a a key that defines your the context of that, right? So in, in this case, it could be you can say this is bike station share bike stations. So that could be your partition key, which would subsequently get used as the BigQuery table name as well. And, and then you can define multiple of them. These are the, just the separators I put in there. And you use pipe to separate these two, uh, and then you can pass them through the command line, right? So these are the you know, just you can pass one set or many sets and they will get processed later on. So this will basically just get added into the message types, uh, which subsequently will use for the filtering and partitioning. 
So if you quickly, quickly look at the pipelines here, right? So we've got uh, five steps here. The first four are we're reading the mixed JSON line, which is coming from the, the uh, cloud storage bucket, and then we filter by the no message type. So the filter by no message type is first of all, uh, I'm doing the filter based on this this uh, this message type of the unique field name, right? So if 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 I do have a message that has that unique field name, then I know I recognize that schema. Otherwise, I do not, right? If I don't have it, I'll basically filter this out. This is the first step, and the second step is the uh, I have to load it in as the as as a dictionary. So later on, it will help me to process. Uh, the data into BigQuery. If I just leave as JSON line, it's going to cause problems later on. Um, and then I will partition it by the message type. So this is done via the beam dot partition uh, component, which will basically give me the. Um, if you look at this, right? So it's actually, I look at them all of the message types again. It's very similar to the filtering, but the difference is when I find the unique field name, I will return the index. So this is the the one in my message type array. So then later on, I can reference it. And then because this one, the partition has to be an integer. So this is very, very key, right? Um, and that's what it allows to put the each different message type into a, like separate pipe, then it can be processed separately. So we can define what we want to do with each pipe, right? And then obviously, I'm just putting this just in case, for whatever reason, I don't want to stop the pipeline. If I still have something that I don't know, about and I want to throw an exception to stop the pipeline. Uh, just keep in mind this pipeline is the batch pipeline. So if you stop it with the error, it will just basically you know kill the job. And then you can orchestrate this kind of things with Cloud Composer, uh, which is quite handy for you know for this kind of use cases, right? So let's look at the last bit. This is the uh, the most useful part after we've actually split all um, messages. So after it's split, right, it's split into these partitioned messages. You can iterate them, right? And then, it, then you, you've got, let's say in this case, because we know we got three types that we defined, and then this would be, is going to give us three, um, three types, right? So three types of messages or three pipes. If what I, I've done is I've gone through each partition in here, right, which has its, has its own pipe of messages, is all in that single partition. And then um, I use the write to BigQuery transform to basically chuck it into the BigQuery. Um, you've got the, the data set, which is best buddy in here. And you can see here, I'm literally using the index to get my partition key, which is subsequently used as the name of the table. And here are the things is I'm doing the write append and then never creating a table. So you can manage schemas in here you know, and creating the table as needed, but I would not, I, I, I wouldn't prefer that because, you know, I would not like the schema to be changed in this particular case or anything. I would prefer to manage this schema in a separate place such as in Terraform. So I know exactly what I'm expecting right from here. So, and then the pipeline doesn't really have to understand the schema. It just has to know which table is going to send it to. So this is the way I prefer to do it, which I think is much cleaner rather than try to mix or, you know, creating tables anywhere, you know, different places can create tables. I think this is this is much uh, better cl cleaning way to handle that, right? So, okay, this this is what the code does. So, and on the on the flex template parts, I wouldn't go to the detail, but I would just quickly go through some of the key areas, right? You've got a Docker file, which you use a base element, uh, the base image to build your Docker image. Uh, you have these things that you use to, to build your stuff. Uh, one of the key things is so keep in mind, I've got two requirement files, right? So because I'm not actually using any additional components other than you know the, the Google Cloud services. Um, so I've got the launcher here, which has the Apache Beam. I'll explain the difference in a second. And then I've got the requirements.txt, which actually got, haven't got anything in it because I don't have any additional dependencies when I'm running it uh, on the data flow job itself. So in the Docker file, there's two parts of it. This Docker file is not actually the one I guess used on the workers to run the actual, you know, uh, passing the files and splitting. It doesn't. It doesn't actually use this template to do that. This template is the is inheriting from the launcher base. So what this does is is creates the instructions to submit. Right. This is why I call it the launcher uh, requirement. So it installs uh, the beam on this 
this Docker image so that later on it can submit uh, or launch the data flow job from this container. Um, the actual key thing is, is, is these two environment variables. So the first one is using the requirements for obviously I'm, on, I'm only using BigQuery, you know, Google Cloud Storage, and there's nothing really else involved in here. So that's why I didn't have to include any additional dependencies. But if you do, you can include them in this requirements file. And the other thing is basically the main, you know, the main file that will be used for the execution that you can include using the py file environment variable. Uh, and then that's it, right? That's the key things in there. And in this process, this is the local runner that you can try everything end to end in there. Uh, so this really helps you debugging. And if you develop something, this is usually uh, you know the first place I would start. Um, and then this is the instructions on packaging the template. Uh, so typically here, you need a number of permissions to actually be able to package it. You package it, and then you build it. You push it into Artifacts Registry. And here, after you've done it, you basically create the, this is the instruction uh, on the, the flex template location. So you actually put it in there based on the, 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 the language, the metadata file, and the image you've built in the last step. So just one quick thing on the metadata, JSON. This is something that you can use to define what you can submit in the, into the flex template. So I've put a few things in here, which basically allows you to pass these things in. Uh, but also, you can add regex validation for each of those if you prefer. And finally, you can run the, the flex template. I put the permissions you you required to, in order to do this in here. Um, and because I've added BigQuery as well in here because BigQuery is required in here. And this is basically the uh, the command you can use. So let's say if you want to run something like this, you can actually integrate this with your composer cluster. You can just submit this and it will run um, your job, right? And then you can actually find the files uh, in order to run the things you need to run. Um, so um, I've actually tuned it, uh, tweaked this quite well already. So you can see I've got I've got it onto a region on a subnetwork. These are the, all the private VPCs. There's no public IPs machine not created with public IPs. Um, and then the temp location, sta staging location. Also, I'm using a service account and not actually just use my user account to do stuff. So this, this is all kind of configured pretty well already. You can just replace these to run yours. Um, all right, finally, I just want to show you what the data flow uh, graph looks like, right? It's, it's pretty simple. I have executed it already. So you can see that um, this is the, the batch template. Uh, here you can, you can see uh, it's doing the filtering, right? After it's done the filtering, it converted to a dictionary. Um, and then, then we're doing the partition. So in the partition here, you can see it's dynamically created three partitions. So this is the one uh, because I've put three different schemas in there to, with three different identifiers. Right, that's why it's created three um, in the partition based on the 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 uh, you know the indexes that integers are returned on each one of those pipes, and then it will then each in each one of those send the data into BigQuery uh, at the end. So that's that's basically how the pipeline works. So you can see that I've actually dumped it into the ingestion pipelines here today. So now this has the same schema as the other one. So I've basically chucked them all into the same data set uh, with uh, on the other side with the public data, data set name convention plus the actual table name. Um, and then look, so you can see that the data is now, you know, loaded into here. So that's how um, it kind of split the, the, the mixed files in here. So they can all be in one or you know in 20, it doesn't really matter. You'll go through all of these line by line and then split it properly and then you know send it to BigQuery. So this this can be very, very useful um, in terms of you know if you have a mixture of different schemas uh, with different data types uh, in the same area that like coming from the event streams, um, then you can use this method to split it. Yeah, so hope this is useful and uh, that's the end of the session. Thank you very much and I'll see you next time. Go, go, go.